Oh my god! There's a fire! Wait, I saw that in Color Splash. That'll put it out. Right. Aim it. Pull out the pin. And fire! <laughs> Hey everyone, Kaihatsu here, and welcome back to The Science Behind. The show where the audio quality exponentially increases after each episode. Thanks to you guys, I've had quite a few suggestions for the next Science Behind episode, including suggestions for Portal, Bioshock, and Paper Mario. I'm still looking at some of the other games, and there will probably be a Bioshock episode at some point, but at the moment, I'm going to cover the Paper Mario series. That's right, a whole series in one video, which was suggested by viewer 101 Jack. This is going to be interesting considering these games defy, defy the laws, laws of, of physics. physics. I'll cover the games in the order that they were released, so let's start with the original Paper Mario. We start with Chapter 6 of Paper Mario, where the evil Huff and Puff has used his Puff Puff machine to create clouds to block out the sun's rays from Flower Field. Cloud making sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, but this is actually possible. In 2013, artist Carolina Sebeka created what is known as the Cloud Machine, an inventive name I know. The device consists of a large styrofoam box of equipment that is sent up into the atmosphere using a weather balloon. When the device reaches a certain altitude, it releases cloud condensation nuclei, made of salt and water vapor to create clouds. The weather balloon then bursts, and the Cloud Machine slowly descends back down to the ground. The creator explained in an interview for Vice Creators Project that the machine is inspired by a geoengineering technique proposed to create brighter, more reflective clouds which will shield the Earth from the sun's radiation and thus partly counteract climate change. So maybe Huff and Puff's plan wasn't so evil after all. Unfortunately, the cloud machine is now an art installation, so it is not currently in use. Maybe we'll see something similar again in the future. Next, we move on to an item that you can use in Paper Mario, the Vault Shroom. This special mushroom allows Mario to electrify himself for a short period of time until an enemy attacks him, which results in them getting shocked. But how does this work without Mario getting electrocuted? Well, there's a few possibilities. One being that Mario has rubber soles on his shoes, as without a way to flow into the earth, electricity cannot conduct through you. This would allow Mario to prevent himself from being grounded before an enemy comes into contact with him. The kind of electricity that the mushroom produces is most likely static electricity, as it is still dangerous enough to hurt someone, or in this case, enemies, but won't kill them outright. Now I'm going to skip over the next few games in the series, as there isn't very much to talk about in them, so I'm moving straight onto Paper Mario Sticker Star, and the most recent entry in the Paper Mario series, Paper Mario Color Splash, as I'm going to take a look at some of the Thing stickers and cards present in them. First, seeing as we just had a look at the Vault Shroom, I think we'll start with the Battery. No! We are not having any more of that like last episode. So, would the battery from Color Splash actually electrocute you? Is it capable of killing anything? Well, to find out, we'll have to work out what kind of battery it's based on. Judging by the appearance, the battery is in fact a D-cell battery, which is also supported by the battery's description and sticker star. Considering the scale of the Paper Mario universe, this also makes sense, except for in Paper Jam where all the sizes of the characters are out of proportion. On average, a D-cell battery has a capacity of 1.25 to 1.5 volts. However, this is nowhere near enough to kill a person, let alone give you a bad shock. Even a 9-volt battery won't kill you if you touch it or lick it. In Sticker Star, you can also use button batteries, which cannot shock you either, but can sometimes match or even surpass the voltage seen in D-cell batteries. The battery that deals the highest amount of damage in Sticker Star is the car battery. Standard batteries usually come at about 12 volts, which may sound like a lot, but it is still nowhere near the lowest recorded voltage that killed a person, which is 42 volts. Although a car battery has enough amperage to kill you, it doesn't have enough voltage to do the job. None of the batteries would have any effect on the enemies in the games either, because they're all made of paper. Even still, don't go around licking car batteries. Now let's cover the next thing, the fan. This fan appears in Color Splash when the Fan Thing card is used. The cutscene involves the fan appearing behind the Earth in outer space, before beginning to blow the targeted enemies towards the front of the screen, as well as spinning the Earth much faster than it should. So, how fast is the fan making the Earth spin? If we slow down the footage, it appears that when it is spinning at its fastest, the Earth is completing about two rotations a second. This would have some very dramatic consequences for the Earth. First, two days would pass by every single second that the Earth was spinning, which means that nearly two weeks would pass by within the span of six seconds. 
However, you wouldn't survive for that long. The Earth would be spinning so fast that the equator would be spinning at almost 120% of the speed of light, which would be 359,750,950 meters per second. You wouldn't die instantly, but you probably wouldn't last longer than a few seconds. Centrifugal force would become much stronger than gravity, and the material that makes up the Earth would be flung outward. The Earth's crust and mantle would break apart into building-sized chunks, and by the time a second had passed, the atmosphere would have spread out too thin to breathe, although even at the relatively stationary poles, you probably wouldn't survive long enough to asphyxiate. Within the first few seconds, the expansion would crush the crust into spinning fragments, which would kill everyone on the planet. Everything would be moving at relativistic speeds, but each piece of the crust would be moving at close to the same speed as its neighbours. This means things would be relatively calm until the disk hit something. The first thing the disk would hit would be the belt of satellites around the Earth. After around 40 milliseconds, the International Space Station would be struck by the edge of the expanding atmosphere and would be vaporized instantly. More satellites would follow. After around a second and a half, the disk would reach the belt of geostationary satellites orbiting above the equator. Each one would release a violent burst of gamma rays as the Earth collided into it. The debris from Earth would expand outward like an expanding buzzsaw. The disk would take about 10 seconds to pass the moon, another hour to spread past the sun, and would span the solar system within a few days at most. Each time the disk engulfed an asteroid, it would spray a flood of energy in all directions, eventually sterilizing every surface in the solar system. However, none of this would actually happen because one, you can't speed up the Earth's rotation by blowing it with wind, and two, there is no air in space to blow around! While we're talking about space, I'll briefly touch on the moon in Paper Mario, because again, there is no breathable air on the moon, yet Mario seems to walk around without any sort of breathing equipment or spacesuit. Anyways, onto the last thing card, and the last item on my list, the fire extinguisher. One of the other thing cards in Color Splash is a fire extinguisher, which can be used to extinguish the flames on Morton's flaming mallet on top of Crimson Tower. The cutscene the card uses shows it extinguishing an entire city's worth of flames, but the problem with this is that it wouldn't in real life. If we look at the fire extinguisher itself, we can see that the label on the fire extinguisher is black. There are several types of fire extinguishers which all extinguish different types of fires and which all have color-coded labels. Water extinguishers, which have a red label. Powder extinguishers, which have a blue label. Foam extinguishers, which have a cream label. Wet chemical extinguishers, which are yellow. And CO2 extinguishers, which have black labels. CO2 extinguishers are probably the most iconic type of fire extinguisher due to the loud sound that they make when discharging CO2. They use a large horn on the front of the extinguisher to spread cold compressed CO2 gas to extinguish a fire. Now, the in-game description of the fire extinguisher also describes it as a CO2 extinguisher, being able to extinguish any sort of fire, but this simply is not true. CO2 extinguishers are only safe to use on flammable liquid fires and live electrical fires. Using this type of fire extinguisher on other types of fires can result in spreading the fire, as reactive substances could split the carbon dioxide into carbon and oxygen, which can lead to violent explosions. This means that by using the fire extinguisher, Mario would effectively burn down the entire city and even burn down Prison Island and create large explosions in the process. It is also dangerous to point CO2 extinguishers at other people, as the CO2 can suffocate people, so Mario would probably kill himself and Morton as a result of oxygen deprivation. Thanks for watching until the end. Why not watch my other video series, Culture Bits, which looks at the cultural influences that have shaped video games. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more science behind videos and some other stuff as well. See you next time!